so today we continue with our series on Old Testament stories. Roger, great work. You must have practiced that a few times. <clears throat> These Old Testament stories do not have the easiest language to read, as Randy and Roger have both experienced. Last week we went from the story of Jonah, <clears throat> which I, it was brought to my attention later, that in my summary I referenced Noah. I apologize for any confusion. <clears throat> I don't think Noah had uh, the fish on the ark. But today we go from an ocean story to the fire. <clears throat> and we've got the story in Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who <clears throat> have been taken to Babylon in the conquest, uh, the destruction of Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar. And the three of these men are Jewish men in Babylonian captivity who have kind of gained the trust of the king. And so they've been put in a minor position of authority within the kingdom. And King Nebuchadnezzar, like most kings of those times, considered themselves gods. They were anointed to be leaders of the particular uh, kingdoms that they ruled, and so they wanted everyone to basically bow down and worship them. So in comes the story with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Outsiders are never really trusted very much. Have you noticed that? And these three men were outsiders in Babylon, along with all of the other Jewish people in captivity. But these guys were in lower levels of authority, and so they were being watched a little more closely than everyone else. And so it wasn't like one day Nebuchadnezzar said, everybody bow down to me, and these three didn't do it. It had become a habit. It had become a practice to where everyone in authority within Babylon, the satraps, which are Persian princes, by the way, the prefects, who are again in, in authority, something similar to judges, governors, the judges, all of these people are not asked only to show hierarchical respect to the king, but to worship the king, to actually worship them. And so all of these people who come to worship are recognizing that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego aren't joining in on the parade. They're not taking their turns coming up to bow down to this golden statue. And so the locals recognized this difference being shown by the outsiders. They took note and they were quick to report it. Not a whole lot different, I don't think, than human reactions today. We come together in communities with people who we have something in common with, common beliefs, common practices, German-based community, Norwegian based community, Polish, Swedish, Hispanic, Asian. You typically see people coming together within communities where there are foundational things in common. And when we see something that does not follow our common practices, we take notice. We may not trust. There may even be a sense of fear in these differences, in these changes. And just, just like a, an organism, it wants to flush out that 
which is different, that which feels like it's invading the norm. And so the people in Babylon wanted to flush out Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And if it meant getting them out of a place of authority, then all the more power to them. So these three men come in and they were questioned by King Nebuchadnezzar. We've been told that you aren't bowing down to the statue of me. And there's punishment for that. There's this raging fire going in the furnace that people who do not want to worship me will be thrown into. So, obviously, guys, you don't want to be thrown in the furnace. Go ahead and bow down to the statue. And so we hear their response. They don't give in to the threats. Their foundation of faith is solid. To the point that they say, throw us in. And if our God saves us from these flames, you will know that it is our God who is the real God and not you or your golden statue. And if we don't survive it, we're still not going to bow down to your statue. And Nebuchadnezzar got angry, cranked up the flames seven times hotter than the norm. As a matter of fact, if you go into Scripture and read this story, it even goes into more detail where it says that some of the guards were killed by the heat standing outside of the furnace. It was so hot. And I sat there reading through this and I thought, you know, what... What are our golden statues today? We've all dealt with it at different times in our life. What prevents us from focusing on God? What is our way of dealing with pressure when the, when the heat goes on? When we're feeling the heat of community, the pressure of family, friends, difficult events in our life, where are we turning? And are we turning to something other than God first? In a nation of plenty, a couple of thoughts came to mind. Money. A golden statue of a dollar bill. Well, maybe not a dollar bill. A $20 bill. Maybe careers. Or maybe individuals. I know some people that are really into what's going on with the Hollywood stars. You know, the lives of people in Hollywood you'd think that this were one of the priorities of our national, our national issues. What types of things prevent us from turning to God when the heat goes on? And then I thought, you know, I wonder if maybe the most common golden statue is that of ourselves. I think it's a good bet that we ourselves most often get in the way of our trust in God. Trusting God. We rely on our skills, our talents, our abilities, our decision-making, our experience. And usually it isn't until our very last option that we will go to God in prayer, realizing it is from Him that all things come. (laughs) 
There will always be times when we are more interested in our own will than God's will. Every day is a different story for each of us. But in the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they put God before their very lives, knowing that they may not come out of that furnace. They still proclaimed God first. And interestingly, once again in this very old story that was written long before Christ's birth, we have Jesus stamped in the story. As Nebuchadnezzar looks into the furnace and sees a fourth individual walking around that looks like a son of God. Jesus was already involved in the story long before his birth. The men were let out of the furnace. They weren't singed. And Nebuchadnezzar fell at their feet. It was a commitment that was a witness and a testimony that changed the lives of a king and all of the people within that kingdom. Zion's mission statement Say it along with me. Connecting to Christ, connecting to one another, connecting Christ to the community and the world. How are we seen as testifying to Christ within our community and our world? It's one thing to do good things. And we do a lot of them. But what sets the church apart from doing good things from anyone else that does good things? Where is Christ proclaimed? Where is Christ being connected to the community and the world? Let's pray each day for the courage and the strength like that of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be able to confess and to proclaim the basis of our faith above and beyond anything else in our life and that from God we have all things. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the message song, Faith of Our Fathers. <laughs>